Hello, my name is Adam. Today we'll be going over some maintenance techniques for the equipment of Seabird Electronics. Now we're going to be looking at the calibration of the SPE 18 or 27 pH sensor. To calibrate this sensor you'll need a few supplies. You'll need some pH buffer solutions. Uh, here we're using a pH of 4, a pH of 7, and finally a pH buffer of 10. So you can use whatever pH uh, you select. You just want to have a little bit of a variety in there to get a full range of uh, the, the sensor. Uh, when you're calibrating the sensor, you'll need to provide power to it. Uh, here we're just using a power supply. You, can, you also need a uh, digital multimeter so you can record the voltage output by the pH sensor. In this particular setup, we have a cable cut uh, that attaches to the pH sensor and then into the power supply. And then we have the multimeter uh, in line with the power supply to record the voltage from the pH sensor. So when we begin, you'll remove the probe guard of the SPE 18 or 27. And you can see here, this is actually a fairly good looking probe. Uh, you can see the crystals are intact. When these get older, uh, they will start to degrade and you'll see these crystals break apart. Uh, so when we first do this, we want to supply power to the pH sensor with a power supply, which is on, and we'll place it in our first solution, pH buffer solution of four. Uh, once it's in there, you want to make sure that you have the instrument grounded into the solution. This is normally done when the sensor is in the water uh, as a circuit is formed between the housing of the instrument and the probe and the, the seawater. But since we're doing this on the bench, we need to create that ground loop using a piece of stripped bus wire that connects to an anode screw on the housing and into the solution itself. So this will help stabilize the reading. You want to leave it in the solution for five to 10 minutes until you get a stable voltage output on the multimeter. Once you do have the stable voltage, you'll record that in our program pH fit. It's a DOS based program on our computer in our uh, software package. When you bring up pH fit, it's going to ask you for the serial number of the sensor. and the ambient temperature, which you want the ambient temperature to be about the same temperature as your pH buffer solutions. Then it asks you for your first pH solution, which will enter as four, and the voltage output on the multimeter for the pH probe, which for this is 1.977. And so then it asks you for your next pH buffer solution. Uh, so we'll move it into our next solution. You want to make sure that you rinse off the electrode prior to placing it in the next solution. And again, use the ground strap in the next solution as well. So then again, we'll wait a few minutes for it to stabilize and record the voltage out for the pH of 7. In this case, 2.797. And move it to the final buffer solution, a pH of 10. So we'll enter in the new pH buffer. 
and record the voltage out 3.534 Once you have entered in the last value, you'll just hit enter again in the program and it will give you a V out and for each sensor, for each solution. And it'll also give you a new slope and pH offset that you will then use to enter into the instrument configuration file. So in this case, for point four one six two and an offset of two point seven six nine three So then you'll resave your configuration file and your pH sensor will be calibrated. This can be performed on a daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly uh, period, just depending on your situation. Also, you don't always need to have the power supply and voltage meter. This can be performed on the CTD sensor itself uh, by using CSAVE to plot the raw voltage output of this particular channel and record it that way. Uh, so then the CTD will be providing power to the sensor and you can view the uh, raw voltage output in CSAVE. Thanks for watching our videos. If you have additional questions, you can find more documentation on our website or call or email us at seabird at seabird.com.